All right, this is wind directions around cyclones and anticyclones. And I'll describe what the anticyclones means in just a second right here. But uh, I realize that this looks like a bunch of lollipops, but these are actually pretty meaningful symbols right here. Um, one thing that, uh, that I need to tell you about is what MB means right here. And that is a unit called millibars, M-I-L-L-I-B-A-R. Yes, you probably recognize milli as being the prefix that means one one thousandth. Uh, and what is a bar? Well, a bar is the same word that uh, barometer comes from, and isobars and barometric pressure. So, one bar equals um, one, really the weight of one atmosphere. Okay, so since you live at the bottom of the atmosphere, you are experiencing one bar of pressure. And so, that can be broken up into thousandths. And we uh, say right around at the bottom of the atmosphere where we live, the pressure kind of hovers right around a thousand millibars. All right, so that's what these increments mean right here, these numbers. All right, now why are there only two numbers? Well, because for the sake of space, I cut off the first one O, and only the second two numbers are in there. So for example, this. Um, Right, uh, let's see, this right here, that would be a thousand millibars, all right? That would be a thousand and twenty-eight millibars right there, and so forth, all right? So, um, I'll explain in just a minute what, uh, or a couple minutes, what these uh, lines mean right here. But what we want to do is we want to draw isobars, all right? We want to draw lines that connect areas of equal pressure. And uh, it's con almost like connect the dots, sort of, but you, just, you need to do a little bit of uh, interpretation right here. So where's the highest number on here? Well, there's a 96 right here, but I'm actually going to tell us to ignore that for just a second. Um, aside from the 96, the highest number is 28 right here. All right, so the highest pressure is really over on the left-hand side. So I'm going to put a big H right there. I'm going to write it in blue. That's our H. And um, that's our highest pressure. So what we want to do is we want to draw isobars, that is, lines that connect areas of equal pressure. Well, since that area in the middle is the, the area, this, the center of high, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a kind of concentric or like a circle that connects those two um, weather stations that have that pressure right there. All right, so that suggests that everywhere along that line, it's the same pressure. In towards the center, it may even be higher. But as far as we know, that's the highest pressure line we can draw. So it says to draw them in four millibar, that's what MB means, intervals. So that means the next one down should be 1,024, right? So let's find the 24s here. We've got one here and here and here. So I'm going to draw it like this. So you might say, well, Mr. Mounts, how did you know not to go around that one? Or, or, or how did you know to take that path right there? Well, even where we don't have data, Look, look, look at these two stations, here and here. That's 1,028. That's 1,020. And so it's got to be 1,024 somewhere in between. And so you can sort of interpret where those lines should go, even if you don't have data. Here's another 28. There's another 20. So 24 has to go in the middle. Remember, these lines are kind of like stairs, represent the edges of stairs. And as you step down, it goes from high to low. But all along the edge of that stair, it, it's the same height. We could think of it as the same way. So all these... These lines right here are the same pressure. I'm now drawing a 1,020 millibar isobar. Right? Millibar is the unit, and isobar is the actual line. Iso meaning same, it means same pressure. All right, so there's our 20 right there. Did I miss any? No, I don't think so. All right, 16, 1,016. Connect the 16s, not the 12s, right? There's a... There we are, and then the 12s are all the way on the outside. That's pretty easy. So they're not perfectly concentric, but it, for the most part, it, it is. All right, now let's look at the right-hand side now. Now I'm gonna draw in red. Um, I said before that this right here is not the highest pressure, but it's actually the lowest pressure right there, 96. Wouldn't you say, why wouldn't that be the highest pressure? Well, remember, I said the atmospheric pressure hovers right around 1,000. So that's not 1,096, but what is that? It's actually really low. It's 996. So it's actually below 1,000. So it's really a low pressure right there. So there's no other 96 to, um, to connect that to, so I'll leave it all by itself. But I will connect. What's the next increment up? What's the next, next interval? 
well, four up from that, right? A thousand. And so we have a couple thousands right here that I can connect in a concentric circle like that. What do we go up from a thousand? We go up to a thousand and four, right? A thousand and four, like so. And then a thousand and eight, which is all the way out here. All right, and this is a very common configuration. All right, we've made two sets of concentric circles, a center of high pressure and a center of low pressure right here. Now, let's ask ourselves, what, um, what direction does the wind want to flow? Well, remember we said before, when we talked about the pressure gradient, that is, these lines are the pressure gradient, almost like stairs stepping down, air always wants to move directly across from high to low at all times. All right, straight across, perpendicular, that's the pressure gradient force right there. Remember, uh, uh, gradient meaning a, a change over distance, all right? So air always wants to flow from high to low, so it's going to flow out of the area of high pressure, and it's going to flow into the area of low pressure right there. Okay, that's great, but hopefully you drew those in kind of light colors or, or light lines because the air doesn't actually take that path. Why not? Because as we said before, the Coriolis effect causes any fluid, whether it's air or water, to deflect off to the right. And so this straight line going across right here, right from high to low, is actually going to be bending to the right. That's going to be bending to the right. This guy is going to be bending to the right. To the right, to the right, to the right, and so forth. Similarly, on the right-hand side, all these, the wind wants to flow right to the center. is going to flow to the center, but it's going to swirl off to the right because of the Coriolis effect. All right, and so we have these two pressure areas right here, one high pressure and one low pressure, and, and wind is going to want to swirl in mean, one direction or another. On the right hand, sorry, on the left hand side, it flows outwards. And what direction is that? Clockwise, right? Kind of like that. We call this an anti-cyclone. I should have made that capitals, I guess, but A-N-T-Y, A-N-T-I, cyclone. On the other hand, a cyclone, which is over here. Air always flows inwards. And what direction is that? Well, it's generally kind of a counterclockwise direction right there. We're going to focus more on cyclones rather than anticyclones because they're more important, no, but because we actually see effects of these. We're going to see a little bit later on how low pressure causes um, us to see storms, to see condensation and wind and rain and all that stuff. We see cyclones just about as often, well, we experience them just about as often, but we don't see them as much because this high pressure air actually results in nice weather, clear skies. All right, brisk wind, and so all that stuff is invisible to us, and we don't really see that as much. It's really the storms that come out of these cyclones right here. And so cyclones, this inwards uh, counterclockwise spinning, is what gives the hurricanes and other mid-latitude cyclones the shape and um, wind direction that, that we see.